Thank you very much, Todd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're on SirBroadcast.com. My name is Brett Denton. I'll be your host tonight. We also have nice guy Todd Lee, my co-host. Sorry we're starting off a little late tonight. Uh, I just want to give a shout-out to my niece, Mina. She's a little girl. She's up in the hospital. She's having a little breathing problems tonight, so they took her to the emergency room. So I just want to tell my sister, you know, thanks for taking care of her. I love you guys. And... uh, this is the music scene. Uh, we talk about all kinds of different music. We've been doing blues. We've been doing, uh, last week we did Guitar Gods. And this week we're going to do Americana music. We're also going to talk about uh, what's going on in, um, in Charlotte tonight and this whole week. Let me see. I, I'm having trouble with my... Your mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, tonight uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of music. And first off, we're going to start off with kind of what's going on in the uh, in Charlotte this week. We've got the uh, North Carolina Music Factory at the Comedy Zone. We've got Carlos Mencia. We also have, and he's going to be there 1023 Thursday through Saturday. Let's see. We've got Andrew Schuler, and he's on Girl Code and also on Comedy Central. And that is going to be from 10.30 to 11.01. He's going to be in there. We also have John Witherspoon. Uh, he was the older man in Friday the movie. He's also in, uh, let's see, he's also on Comedy Central and BET. Looks like he was uh, with uh, Ice Cube and Chris Tucker. Also, let's see, we've got the Night Theater. They've got the John Denver celebration no- November 7th and 8th. You've got Los Lobos coming in, a 40th anivis- anniversary tour, La Pistola tour, October 26th. We've got Buddy Guy with Quinn Sullivan. Oh, he's smoking good. We love Buddy Guy. We do a lot of his. He's going to be here on November 9th. We have Dave Mason's Traffic. He's coming in at the McGlowan Theater. And then we also have Justin Towns Earl, November 17th at the McGlowan Theater. All right. Also, uh, Time Warner Cable Arena. Uh, This looks like this is March 7th of this coming year. Uh, Fleetwood Mac. uh, That show is at 8 o'clock. And tickets uh, start around $89. Uh, Bojangles Coliseum, Chrissy Hines, uh, vocalist of the Pretenders, November 8th. Dave Chappelle, November 10th. The Brian Setzer Orchestra, his uh, Christmas program, uh, is December 6th. March 27th, uh, we have John Mellencamp, uh, who I need to, in parentheses, they have him from Seymour, Indiana. That must be Brett's neck of the woods. That's it. Uh, here's one that uh, for the more uh, culturally minded at Amos's South End we have Extreme Midget Wrestling uh, that's uh, Saturday October 24th Todd I don't believe that Extreme Midget Wrestling is actually the correct term I think they, they like to be called little people uh, I believe you're right but anyway uh, <laughs> uh, at the studio movie grill in the epicenter we had the return of R&B Live. Uh, no actual performers have been specified yet for this event, uh, so I guess that's uh, going to be determined at a, uh, a later time. And uh, so that seems to be the, uh, the entirety of the program. What else? There's more. Uh, also, Sunday, October 26th, uh, Carolina Panthers versus the Seahawks. That's uh, this Sunday at home, 1 o'clock. Uh, Tuesday, October 21st, uh, that's tonight, uh, Bill Hanna Jazz Jam. That's at the uh, Double Door, famous blues um, venue here. Uh, open mic with the Smoke and Jays at Smokey Joe's Cafe. Didn't we play? Uh, we played over there a couple times, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, we, we've been there a couple times. They uh, are really good. We uh, When we went up there to play after they uh, opened up with some Stevie Wonder, when we went up there, it was just... Uh, it was just crazy. We were kind of worried about uh, having to... Uh, 
follow those guys because they were just that good. Yeah, yeah, they were very professional sounding. They're they're like the house band there. Uh, also, the Jayhawks will be at the Neighborhood Theater uh, at the Double Door in uh, October 22nd tomorrow. That's Chris Eldridge. October 24th, Joe Ely. Uh, that's Friday. And December 17th, Bill Kirchin um, at the Neighborhood Theater. October 25th, we've got um, Bobby Bear Jr. Um, it looks like that was, was this this past week, 10 13, Tad Benoit and Tommy Castro? No, that's 12 13. Oh, 12 13. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reinsert that one then. Okay, um, November 2nd. Um, on a Sunday, uh, Reckless Kelly, November fifth, Ian Hunter, formerly of Mott the Hoople. Do you know much about Mott the Hoople? All I remember is that one song, "All the Young Dudes," and uh, maybe a couple of others. I saw some videos of in the back in the eighties. Um, that's about it. Uh, I know my knowledge of them. Uh, Thursday, November six, uh, Nick Cave, and. Friday, okay, here we go. Friday, November the 28th, uh, Tom Constantine. You know, Tom Constantine is actually from around here, and his big claim to fame is he was the first keyboardist for the Grateful Dead. Yeah, it's a, it's, this is part of something called uh, the Dead Bash. He also did play with... Uh, oh, Jefferson Starship. Yeah, yeah Jefferson, Jefferson Starship. He's got, got them on here. And also... Uh, Again, Saturday, ten thirteen, is Tad Benoit and Tommy Castro at also at the Neighborhood Theater, and that looks like that is the uh, entire lineup of, of all those various venues. Well, tonight we're going to talk about Americana music, and really, what Americana music is. You think you could tell me what Americana music is, Todd? Well, what would you say would be your definition of Americana? My definition is that is it's like all the root music of uh, a popular American music today. It's everything from uh, bluegrass to traditional country, mountain music, uh, the blues. Um, I would also throw in um, maybe uh, some some Celtic music, uh, gospel music. Um, both African American gospel, uh, as well as uh, what I can think of as uh, gospel hymns, that type of thing. Uh, so you mix all that together, um, even some uh, early rock, rockabilly. Put it all together, and that, that's where you get just a wide variety of of musical styles that create um, create uh, Americana. That's right. I mean, really, I kind of looked up Wikipedia, but you know, what I just had was folk, the mix of folk, blues, bluegrass, jazz, country, and rock and roll. And that's uh, that's really what it is. And a lot of times, they don't, they use all kinds of different bands to rope them into the Americana realm because they don't really know where to play them. And uh, so, you know, we hate putting, uh, you know, names and, and being uh, uh given a certain you know well this is pop this is rock and roll this is country especially when they if they play all three uh probably one of the big americana groups that are out right now is dave and phil alvin and the guilty ones todd and i were fortunate to go see these guys let's see where did we go see them at the was it, was it the visualite it was a visualite that's correct yeah. and we went and saw them at the visualite and they were really, really good. Uh, we were totally blown away. Dave on guitar and his brother Phil. And Phil had been sick for a while, and we were kind of worried that maybe his voice wasn't going to be up to par. But it was. It was really good, wasn't it? It was outstanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It really Incredible. was. Incredible. Uh, so, you know what? I'm going to play a little bit of Dave and Phil Alvin real quick so you get kind of an idea of what kind of music you're, uh, we're talking about. I like that Martin guitar. Yeah. Now Phil's That's got nice that cutaway. Cutaway. Do you you like the cutaways or do you like the uh, just the? St oh no, Dave's got a cutaway too. Yeah, I like cutaways. You do see. I never go past the twelfth fret that much. Well, maybe to the fourteenth. 
all by myself. Yeah, by myself. All by myself. I don't need no one to help me got to do it all by myself. Look at that picking the way that Phil does it. Yeah. Locked up in jail. Dave's got the thumb pick. But now I'm on the farm, boys, and I'm doing time all by myself. Yeah, this is off of uh, Common Ground, the music and songs of Bill, Big Bill Brunzi. They actually got to see him when they were younger, didn't they? Growing up where they did in Southern California. I keep, I keep thinking they said they actually might have seen him, or, or at least they picked up his records. And Yeah, that's what it was. They picked up a record and brought it home, and they bought it simply because of Bill, Big Bill Brunzi and how cool he looked in the picture. And, uh, you know, they hung out at the Ash Grove and got to meet. You know, they had these... They were two. Maybe it was, was a T-Bone Walker. That T-Bone they knew. Walker, yeah. and, and their big guy was Big Joe Turner. They met Life, Lightning Hopkins, so they I lived women, they from the guys. I can take care of them. I don't need no help. All by myself. All by myself. Yeah, by myself. All by myself. I don't need no one to help. I got to do it all by myself. Well, let's see if Dave is Dave taking a solo. Cross that suit, old Popeye Jim. All the Uncle Sam soldiers, I can take care of them all by myself. Yeah, by myself. All by myself. And to think for years, like 20 years, they hated each other, detested each other, you know? Kind of like most brothers, you know? Yeah, yeah. I like the way he snaps the strings on that. Well, that is great. Oh, my gosh. What, uh... I think I first started hearing that kind of music was probably... Well, when I moved to California, I started getting that No Depression magazine, and that's what they featured was kind of that... that kind of back-alley type music. And you and I know what it's like to play music and have to go out and do kind of these smaller clubs and, uh, you know, play for, you know, not a lot of money. And, you know, it's kind of tough. We played a gig this weekend, you know, and it's it's uh, it's kind of tough. You know, you don't uh, – um, I kind of feel for them, don't you? I yeah. Mean, what's your – have you thought about what your – remember we were talking – we were sitting around kind of talking about our worst gigs ever. Have you thought about what your worst gig was ever when I – or have you been pretty fortunate? No, no, not not all the time, that's for sure. I think the one of the strangest gigs was years ago when I played with David Childers and uh, the band he at that time he, he had was called Gut Wrench, and we went down on I think it was uh, St. Patrick's Day right. weekend on a Saturday to play at some big like dance hall kind of club place that had live music. You're probably looking forward to it too, weren't you? Yeah, I think I was, and uh, it was in a real cool section of Columbia, South Carolina. So uh, we, you know, we figured there'd be a lot of students from from uh, USC down there, and um, but as it turned out, because it was St. Patrick's Day, most of the people were down around wherever it was like the the real restaurant area. So not too many people came into this place that night, and they ended up paying us uh, with hoagie sandwiches and uh, uh, two or three six packs of I don't know what it was like Bud Light Coors Light which I wasn't even a beer drinker at that time so you know that was like you know no money involved in this but it, it was fun getting up there and playing on a big stage like that but yeah it was kind of abysmal I mean there's been a lot of places walked away with hardly anything I'm a, you know right so. right you know we uh, we're in the prodigal sons and we've been playing together for the last I, I'm thinking it was, it's been 26 months so it's been two years and t two months and we play roughly at least a couple of times a month maybe three times a month and we've been very fortunate we have found that 95 percent of the places that we play they take care of us uh, we played up at Safari Miles up in Denver that place is top-notch pure class I can't say enough good things about Mike who's the owner up there. His last name is Mike. It's Mike Greek. 
and they uh, they took care of us. They paid us fifty dollars more than what we were uh, expected to get. They comped all our dinners, and then as I was le- I was walking and loading out, I heard him say to the bartender, "He goes, he was holding like the sales sheets, and he looks at, he goes, my gosh." He goes, every time these guys come here, we sell a hell of a lot of beer, which is always good because when you're a musician, that's they don't really necessarily care if you're good or bad. They just care about, you know, the end of the night and how much you sell. I mean, they'll play karaoke, you know, if it brings <laughs> in money, which I'm not a big fan of karaoke at all, at all. No. no. I don't like it at all. And you're right, though. If if, you, if the crowd's not there and they're not making their money on the nights, you know, I mean, sometimes that's just totally, it just happens that way. But um, and you're kind of a victim of circumstance. And other nights, you know, everything's just on and you hit it right. So, but it does make a difference in the end to their what their their is in their cash register at the end of the night. It looks like we have a question. I'm going to bring it up here in just a second, <clears throat> as soon as I figure uh, out up. Uh, I'm going to play real quick. I'm going to play a song. Todd Todd and I are also in a band called The Front Porch Boys, and it's basically me on acoustic guitar and bass, and then Todd comes in with electric guitar, the banjo, the mandolin, and he even brings his fiddle, but I usually ask him just to keep that thing in the case. <laughs> he started out on banjo, and I remember when we were going to go do the show, uh, he said, well, I'll bring my banjo along. And when someone says they're going to bring their banjo along, you tend to be like, oh. But I didn't know that that was the one that he actually started out on playing. And uh, we play this song. Who would you... This is by the Gourds. Can you tell me a little bit about that uh, that song? Uh, the first time I heard it was uh, I was playing uh, with an Americana band about uh, five years ago. And uh, I'd heard of the Gourds, but I really hadn't heard of their music. And um, on a CD of songs we were considering playing, there were three songs. On this one, Burn the Honeysuckle, and uh, Lower 48, and I can't remember what the third song was. Uh, maybe it was El Paso. Uh, were three songs of theirs that, uh, that we were going to play. And, I mean, all three of the songs so I thought were great songs, and we did play those. So that's that's where I really first became acquainted with their music, um, and they're from Austin, uh, and they're they've traveled all over the Midwest and I guess the South and North Central states, and uh, it's, uh, it's let me think is it a five piece band four piece band four piece band I believe, uh, although occasionally they may have a fifth person uh, sit in with them or tour, and. Um, so that's that's the extent of my knowledge. Uh, there, I've heard everything they've done is to, uh, from uh, kind of a bluegrass uh, to a zydeco feel. Uh, they they've got a lot of instruments in in their music. Um, so it's a it's a pretty wide variety of stuff that they do. The, to me, that's true Americana, where you mix up all those genres together. Um, well, heck, you know that in uh, Austin, they are. <coughs> That's kind of the hub of, oh, here we go. It looks like I got a question. You know how we were talking about uh, uh, brothers, how they don't get along and, you know, things like that. And, you know, <laughs> me and my brother always had kind of a rivalry, and I love him a lot. And um, I would say uh, him and I were always, you know, he was always the good athlete, and I would sit around and listen to music. But the thing about it is, is Travis and, and Travis if you're out there you know I love your brother I do uh, Travis was always just so much better than I was in in sports you know and I used to be really proud that he was he was you know he was good in everything he could pitch he could play baseball he could play football I was the only sport I was ever good in was soccer and of course he was good in there and we played on a lot of teams together and uh, him and I have uh, have really torn it down uh, before, but uh, you got me missing you now, brother. I see you sent me a message here. Um, it says, Travis Denton, where's a good place to listen to blues in your area? Well, Travis will tell you the first place to go see good blues is wherever we are playing. But really, the best place, the most iconic place is, should we say it together? One, two, two three, three, the, the Double, double Door, door Inn. In. 
The Double Door Inn is, I mean, you want to name a few people who you know have played there? Do you want to name? Uh, Clapton apparently came in there one time. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, Tinsley Ellis, the Nighthawks. Uh, I think Gatemouth Brown's been there. The fabulous Thunderbirds, yeah. Dave Alvin, uh, Bill Kirchin, the Lost Straight Jackets. They, Tommy Alfred, Castro. Tommy Castro, uh, Tab Benoit. That Walter Trout. Re- Walter Trout, guys like that. And <clears throat> did you just put Jim Morrison on here, Travis? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, my brother, he's got a good sense of humor. And he asked us when the front bo- porch boys are playing next. And me and Todd were thinking about maybe doing probably next month at Matthew's Ale House at the end of the month. We were talking about maybe going over there. And we do a lot of bluegrass. And we do western swing. And we do a lot of that kind of uh, Americana music. But uh, one song that we do do by the Gorge, which is Todd's... This is Todd's probably favorite Americana band, and this song is called Burn the Honeysuckle Down, which is basically... Can you explain what that term means to me, Todd? Or means? Well, I mean, you know, honeysuckle grows wild all over the South, I guess, everywhere from, like, the Carolinas and Virginia all the way to the deep South and probably East Texas and... I don't know how far it goes, but it, uh, um, it it grows like a weed. You know, basically, it's like a wild plant, wild vine plant. And I, and I think the song just has to do with, uh, uh, you know, when he when he passes away, that uh, all that honeysuckle that grew up around his yard, uh, he wants it he wants it gone or something like that. I, I really I uh, that uh, you know just talking to my brother and we used to play. You know, he called in here, and I really appreciate that. I feel a little. You know, uh, we used to play in the woods a lot, and uh, we would we used to smell the honeysuckle all the time. And I'm sure Travis remembers we would take the yellow part of the honeysuckle off, and then and it would give you just a little bit of sweet, you know. Yeah. And it was uh, I'm sure he remembers those days. We used to ride motorcycles, and him and I we would always listen to music, and we would make. I know I'm getting off track here, but you know it's just it's really nice to hear from your brother. I love you. But anyway, we're going to play a little bit of the Gourds here, and these guys are great. I'll tell you, they do play Americana music, but they also did a duet with Snoop Dogg, and they did uh, <laughs> Gin and Juice, yep, and it is yep. awesome. I loved it. It is fantastic. So we're going to play a little bit of these guys. Uh, this is the Gourds, and by the way, Todd can play this mandolin part right on the money. Here's the Gourds. Burn the honeysuckle down. Gosh, Austin is awesome. So he's got the uh, the accordion. Oh yeah, my old man plays that. They got the accordion on uh, lower forty-eight. One of those guys picks up a fiddle. It's <laughs> so goofy. I love it. Look at that. My old man can play the heck out of a, a, a uh, accordion. That's a tough instrument. Oh my gosh. He said he got it because he couldn't afford a piano, so he started playing the accordion. And it was just amazing, you know. Not everybody can play. 
any fool can play a guitar. You know, it just like the black stops on the back. That, I know. That, how does I, he know where to go? I have no idea. Buttons. It's just like somebody playing a pump organ, you know, or something like that. My brother-in-law is an organist, and just you know, watching him work all these stops and things, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this yeah. guy is crazy. Look at him. Let us see the rain. It's a rolling through the trees. Paint a bacon and a banjo on my knees. Let us see the lightning cracking in the spring. Oh, when the moon goes down in the morning, I smoke and I sing. If you saw him on the street, you might think he worked at a music store or something. Yeah. Oh. Either that or he's a frequent resident of the uptown shelter or something. <laughs> oh my gosh so that right there is the gourds and i'll tell you what a fantastic band that is and you turned me on to them i didn't really know much about what they were all about uh, until you you told me about them where did you hear hear from them uh, i think it was uh, i was looking at uh, my uh, friend Dave Childers' website, and there were some uh, pictures or video clips of him uh, sitting in with them. Or, uh, that's the first time. Or it, it, that, I think he had also opened up for him at some point when he was traveling at one point five, six years ago. So that's uh, that's how I first got familiar with the name. He's a uh, local guy, course. isn't he? Yeah, he's from uh, Mount Holly. He's uh, he's been an attorney. Uh, it's been his career, but he's also always done music on the side. He's written a lot of music. He wrote poetry, um, and then he turned a lot of his poetry into uh, song lyrics. And uh, I think he's influenced a lot by people like Bob Dylan, maybe Springsteen, some of his more Americana type stuff. And um, uh, that I mean, that's that's a good example of uh, the kind of influences he's had. Well, but. we'll see if we can pull some of that up. This, uh, you know, when I lived in Texas, I really in Bakersfield, California, I really got hip to a lot of that Americana music and kind of that country music and acoustic music. I always kind of liked it, but, you know, when you move to different areas of the country, you tend to get kind of hip to the kind of music they're playing. And this is by Robert Earl Keane, and this song is called What I Really Mean. And really what it is is through this song, he's actually speaking out to a female just he's telling how great it is they're on the road they're in the radio station kind of like us i guess and but their significant other isn't with them and he basically is kind of telling that story and i think i'm gonna i'm just gonna play a little robert earl keen and this is called what i really mean nashville sucks <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that shirt? I think that's the way a lot of the American they people are. feel about the Nashville music industry. All the way to all these and time for Mardi Gras, you should have seen craziness down there. What I really mean, I wish you would. We were down on Beale Street, Memphis, Tennessee. The blues and booze and barbecues, our name on the marquee. You said, sing. This song uh, is kind of sad, I think. I, I really like it. It's what I really mean. I wish you would.
You ever play a Dobro? No, I was just looking at it. You could play it, you know. It's just like a lot like the lab still, I guess. Well, it's actually an open G or D. Yeah. And you play that every night. And of course it's up off the bridge. Yeah. What do you uh what do you what do you think of him? I like his sound. It's, it's, it's a little bit more laid back, in it, but it's it's got a good groove. It really it. is. I'll tell you, he. Uh, I didn't know anything about him, and I went to go see uh, him in uh, Billy Bob's Texas in Fort Worth. And he was, uh, I didn't know a lot of his music, and I felt embarrassed because the whole crowd knew him. And uh, But, you know, I started hearing him on the... Uh, um, radio down there because they actually do play good music and uh, it was uh, I was I was truly blown away by uh, his music and I've went on to become a fan and actually you know that there's a song called the bluegrass widow that he does and he talks about a little band that he had down in College Station Texas called the front porch boys and that's uh -huh. kind of where I got our name from because I liked it so much yeah. and uh, um, but Here's another band that uh, that I personally really like. This is called the Bottle Rockets. And they've been around for a while, but they're also Americana. But if you listen to this music, you would swear that it was, it was rock and roll. I mean, it really, yeah. you, you know? Well, the Cross Canadian Ragweed, I think that's another band that fits in that genre. Maybe. I, I know, they, they do, they do, yeah, you know? they got definitely more of a rock edge, but... And I think, you know, as you get older and you become more aware of the... Uh, you know what's going on in life and how life works and you know things like that you know you kind of can relate to a lot of the songs you know and uh, if you find yourself being turned off by pop music you need to find some Americana music and get yourself turned on to it because it really is it's it's really no different than the kind of music that my mom and my dad used to listen to you know which was old country and old rock and roll they really take a lot of access it's roots music you know right. and it really is people and actually playing their instruments they're actually playing <laughs> their instruments and uh you know it, it's kind of like we were having a little te technical difficulties earlier when we started you know and that's that kind of stuff happens it happens when we play at the gigs and you know uh and they just play through it, you know? Yeah. And that's uh, that's the thing. And, you know, if you make a little mistake, it's all right. But I'm going to play a song called Radar Gun by the Bottle Rockets. And you'll find this is uh, pretty funny. This is about a cop who uh, uses his radar gun to uh, catch uh, speeders. Try this one called Radar Gun and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Straight from 12th grade into junior college Buddy, 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 pass my exam Making me a law enforcement person Got me a gun and a badge on my band Wait our gun, wait our gun Forty-three from where I was sitting Thirty miles an hour, that's a lot of our land Please remove your license by your registration What is the name of your insurance man? Wait our gun, wait our gun Making money and I'm having fun with my weight our gun, weight our gun My brand new weight our gun now I like that Rickenbacker. Those man. things are not cheap either. They are not priced on that. Yeah. And he's playing three chords. That's three chords. Yeah. That's rock and roll. Right. I like that Lakeland bass too. Yeah. We should pick up this song. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? I remember you played it about a year ago, and, and I think you just want to make sure you do it justice. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we can do it justice. These guys, these, these guys play like they're not they're like in the same vein, right? That we are. Schedule 19 on a special election. Got our money problems riding up, dropping them limits like a hot potato. Fifty down to thirty, I'll be Shiny Simmons, radar gun Man, I'm the part of the 
patrol car cruising on the parking lot. These guys are awesome, man. <laughs> Scanning those dashes and mirrors and visors. The little detectors that ruin it I love it this all. part. Johnny got a one on an 86 T-Bird. I pull up slow just as close as I can. Billy Rock said it's all natural output. Just that puppy with the one song. That's my radar gun, radar gun. Making money and I'm having fun with my radar gun, radar gun. With my brand new radar gun. Collect call from Todd Lee from <laughs> Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. Will you accept the charges? Sure. <laughs> you need to come and pick me up. I'm in there. Uh, looks like we've got a couple of uh, other messages. Let's see. Let's see what he says here. Excuse me. Oh, Travis said, uh, sometimes the hardest thing to say is what you really need. And that's true. That's, uh, you know, I've always communicated with music. I found that, uh, I don't know, what about you, Todd? I used to kind of use it as an escape, you know? Music? Yeah, oh yeah, it was definitely, you know, some place where your your mind can go when you're trying to, you know, maybe block out some of the realities of adolescence and everything else that you went through. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I found strength in music. I mean, I would listen to music when I was running, lifting weights, things like that. Whatever, uh, listen to music while I studied. It was just, it was just omnipresent almost. I uh, and if I didn't have a music on, I was hearing it in my head. I, mean, I do too. Yeah. That's is, you know, my dad kind of. Uh, I always uh, blame my father on the fact that I'm a musician because he would always have these really cool albums like live. <coughs> uh, Elvis Live via satellite yeah. from Hawaii. Uh, Johnny Cash falls in prison. He would have the Mamas and the Papas. He would uh, listen to all this different. You know, my dad was pretty hip. Plus, he played the organ and he plays the uh, accordion. And uh, you know, he—I don't think he realizes it, but you know, he—he he could have instead of being a teacher, he could have definitely been a musician out there. Um, and of course, when he started playing in kind of the late. 50s and the early 60s, you know, the accordion was was kind of a, a bigger uh, instrument around that mm -hmm. time. And then, of course, guitar came along, and, you know, it was kind of unpopular for a while. And now, I wish I would have had him teach me how to learn. I mean, imagine busting one of those things yeah, out at yeah. the shows, you know. Uh, we're going to play a, a little clip here from a br band. Why don't you tell us a little bit about these guys? Uh, this is the, the Abbott Brothers. Abbott, Abbott Brothers. Abbott Brothers. Yeah, they're from uh, Concord. And, oh, right here from North Carolina? Yeah, in that general vicinity. And uh, I started hearing about them probably four or five years ago. Uh, I know my son, older son Nick, uh, listened to some of their music. He got into that, and as well as his, uh, his girlfriend, Angelica. And uh, then I also found out that... Uh, Again, my friend David Childers, he, he gets around. He, uh, he collaborated some with uh, the bass player from the band. Uh, and it's, I've heard their stuff called everything from uh, uh, Reconstruction Punk to uh, I forget I've what else, whatever else they called it. it because it was hard to put a, a name on it. It was, uh, they, were, they were definitely troubadours. So. They are. And I'll tell you, I, I really uh, have heard. I, I was reading about them in the magazines again, and that's how I've kind of got hit to. A lot of uh, music out there, but uh, I'm going to play a little bit of the Avid Brothers right here. They are from about 35 minutes up the road, up in uh, Concord, North Carolina, and uh, let's let's just check them out here. Hello, we're the Avid Brothers here in Cologne, Germany. The song's called the Salvation Song. Look at those hippies. Yeah. He's got a, uh, a signature Martin out. That may even be it right there. It's a Martin. And if you take See, this could have been played in the 40s or the 50s. You yeah, know what I mean, it's yeah. pretty timeless sound. It is. 
And as my life turns to a song Even the style of banjo he's playing is kind of frailing Yeah Yeah. On a banjo. And it's like almost like right out of early like the earliest style of banjo playing, maybe even some like ragtime kind of oh, yeah. sound to it. Or as Bill Monroe used to say, it has ancient tones. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, once again, there is some music that's bluegrass. Was really nothing like what we li- listened to before, and they, uh, you know, it just, uh, it, you know, it's nothing like uh, what we listened to prior uh, to that. You know, w- that was almost hard rock with the bottle rockets. Yeah. And this right here was about, uh, you know, it, it's. Uh, Kind of the old timey sound, you know, like an old brother where art that, yeah, which is a great is. movie. If folks haven't seen it, I'll tell you it's a it's a fantastic one. Uh, I'm gonna we'll see if we can play. Uh, I'm gonna play. Uh, I think I'm gonna pull up some Ray Wiley Hubbard. Um, he was big in uh, Texas, of course, and he used to uh, come down and uh, cross Canadian ragweed. Cro- yeah, they, they covered one of his songs. Oh, really? Did yeah. they? Yeah. He. Uh, he had that song in the early early 70s he wrote called Up Against the Wall Redneck Mother. Did yeah, you ever hear that yeah, song? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It uh and it's one of those deals he's kind of like Arlo Guthrie. Arlo Guthrie never wants to play Alice's Restaurant in his song or in his uh concerts. Yeah. You know, he he uh he kind of turns his back on that song and it, it's kind of unfortunate because and that's kind of with Ray Wiley Hubbard. He he doesn't like doing up against the wall redneck mother. But you know, you see somebody like BB King who probably plays or no, he doesn't probably pay plays The Thrill Is Gone in every single show. And every time I've seen him, which is six times, it always you know, he's totally into it, you know, and he's probably played it thousands of times, you know. Yeah. And uh well here's some old uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard right here. Oh man. When I was a young man, about 21 years old, y'all, all I wanted was a stripper girlfriend and a gold top Les Paul. Be careful of the things you wish for, you might get them. There was a nightclub in Dallas. It's called Mother Blue. Gold top Les yep. Paul. It's where Lightning Hopkins played and Freddie King even paid some dues. And all the dealers and gamblers and young white hipsters all made the scene. Looks like a Fender acoustic amp back there. He's pretty well shaven. It was not a place for law abiding citizens. But Jackie Jones had him a habit. He just couldn't stop. He looks like he could have been playing bass for Grand Funk Railroad or uh, you know, something like Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, he, does, he does look like the bass player from Spirit. I yeah, get like yeah. a live album, but yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what I've got. That's a J45 Gibson. That's an older one, but that's the one I've got. Which uh, that thing is a ringing mother. That is a big stack. That's an Ampeg right there. Notice how it's torn at the bottom right? Yeah. Yeah. Gives it character. I don't. I think that's a Vox amp that he's playing on the other side. She said, every time I hear that song, my insides feel like warm butter. I just want to take off my clothes and dance around in my underwear. <laughs> I said, down in Louisiana, where the alligator grows so mean. That's all I knew of it, but it was enough. Me and this dancer, we hit it off like a metaphor. 
This is awesome. Yeah. This is great. When she went to Hollywood, she murdered an actor. She got a job dancing on the Hudson Brothers. TV he looks like he could be a college professor at, you know, Berkeley or something, you know? Yeah. In science. I got over eventually. And now me. Actually, doesn't look much different from you at a gig on Saturday night, Todd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I can see the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the resemblance I guess right I, now. I guess that'll be me when I'm 65. <laughs> That's awesome. It was 23 years ago. I ended up marrying that Mother Blues door girl. We had us a boy. He 19 years old. Now he played Well, that is the great uh, Ray, Ray Wiley, Wiley Hubbard, Hubbard, I'll tell you. Um, I saw him one time, and he did a lot of uh, songs uh, like Choctaw, uh, Bingo, and uh, Cooler Than Hell was another one that was a really good song that he did. And, uh, of course, you know, I was down in Texas when I heard him. And uh, that was one thing about Texas is was great music and, if you like, steaks. That was That's yeah. what was really uh, <laughs> good about, uh, about Ben. What would... Um, my brother was asking about, uh, you know, us playing the uh, the front porch boys. I mean, when we do it, we just kind of we do old timey. I mean, we do like Rocky Top, and uh, you do uh, Dooley, and we do a lot of we do the Gourds, and we do Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. Mm -hmm. And I would consider what we do as uh, definitely Americana type yeah, music, yeah, hundred percent, yeah. Without even intending it for it to be that, that's what it came out as. Right, right, and you know, me, me growing up in Southern Indiana, mm -hmm. that is, you know, kind of where my uh, my roots came from. You know, you've got Kentucky right across that line. Yeah. You got bluegrass music. Um, a lot of blues comes up the Mississippi River and into the Ohio River. That kind of music, and uh, it's a nice melting pot of of music there. And I've got a lot of good friends that, that play from right there. I remember from a former bandmate. Uh, he once claimed that the term hillbilly came from, of all places, somewhere in uh, southern Michigan. There's some kind of hill country up up in that region. In I don't Michigan? Know, I, don't know, I don't know if that's accurate or not. I mean, I can think of, of hills and hill people. Right, right, right. Literally meaning like around the foothills of the mountains, you know, whether it's uh, up in West Virginia or down here in the Carolina, North Carolina. Kentucky, Western, East, Virginia. Western Kentucky, yeah, yeah, Tennessee, in the Ridge Country of Tennessee. I mean, that's all. That's hill country. I'm sorry, I don't think it's it is quite it up is. in Michigan. And I'll tell you, you know, it's uh, it's either moonshine, the coal mine, or moving on down the line. Right. You know, right. that's that's pretty much the life that's that's uh, up there. Yeah. And it's, uh, but they they really have you know really really good um, music. You wanted to play some Dave. Childers, who is a local artist, and I want to uh, I want to bring some up and just see if we can find on there if you see anything that he he does. Uh, what about that right there? What is that? What's the early, the early morning? Yeah, this okay. This, this is just him solo playing someplace like the Evening Muse. Is that what is it? Is yeah, that's yeah. correct. Here in Charlotte, which is more of a, a venue for kind of a songwriter's, which is what he is. He's a he's a songwriter as well as a musician performer and you played with him yeah like 26 27 years ago when i was just a yeah know, they claim he's a good year old dude a good friend of yours gibson j45 man seems to be a reoccurring theme that boy riding on a little moped leaving a waldrop's tavern big semi rolling off the interstate Bristle and they'll come together Down at the bridge at the bottom of the hill Where the creek runs high and the chemical spill Colors the air with a sulfurous hue I didn't know he was that good. Oh, he's oh good. Oh my gosh, I hear you talking about him In all the, the time. So, I mean, some of the songs that he was doing, you know, 25 plus years ago, I mean... The Wild lyrics always got me. Field. I think he had to clean some of them up because <laughs> they weren't yeah, as politically correct uh, by today's standards as, as they might should be. But. 
we got a pretty good music scene here in Charlotte. You know, we're fortunate. We get a lot of good Americana, blues, American, uh, you know, we got Fleetwood Mac coming and, uh, you know. Wake up, baby, and let me take you in my truck. I've never been to this place. Is it in No Dock? I think so. North, Some, somewhere, North Davidson, somewhere up Davidson. there around Central Avenue or North Davidson. I, I, I heard I, everything was jumping down on Central Avenue. Yeah. That's also a song lyric. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> that was... Uh, the, you, the funny thing is you contrast this with the song Dance Macabre that he did. That He gave he even credited me on, on the, uh, on on the, the credits. On oh, the lyrics. really? Yeah, because him and... Uh, the, the bass player and myself, plus the people in the band he was in at that time, uh, the modern Don Juans. <coughs> but I remember that song from way back sitting around the kitchen table at his house out there on Knowles Road and uh, Mount Holly, scratching out lyrics, and mine became a song that I did with the, the little alternative rock band that I had at that time after I've been playing with him and his became the song Dance Macabre so wow this is wow that's really uh, that's really good you know gosh it makes you want to pick up a guitar yeah hey you wanna you wanna pick something real quick what do you what do you think you wanna do a little something music playing yeah. playing instruments yeah we'll play a little something yeah I'm trying to think of what we could play um maybe we could do like a truck driving man in G or something okay you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, G, uh, G or A. G or A. What are you, what are you comfortable Let's doing? Let's see. It? We play it. We play it in. Uh... I'll tell you, G always kind of works for me pretty good. Okay. 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 We'll go ahead and uh, see. We'll just do a little bit of the uh, of that. You know what? I may just. I don't like to sing too much, but I, I guess I'll. Uh, Go ahead and I'll uh, I'll do this song. Well, I stopped in a roadhouse in Texas. Was a little place called Hamburger Day. And I heard that old jukebox playing a song about truck driving. Well, pour me another cup of coffee. For it is a Jukebox and play that truck driving band. I'm heading to my Indiana home. You want to help me out here? Pour me another cup of coffee. For it is the best in the land. I'll put a quarter in the jukebox. truck driving man right there from Bakersfield's own uh, Red Simpson recorded by many many people uh, Buck Owens to be uh, um, to be specific about that Todd and I we don't like to sing too much but you know if we have to we're uh, we'll bust um, it out for which we're, people are grateful that's it that's right <laughs> remember ladies and gentlemen the more you drink the better we sound which is always the <laughs> yeah definitely with the front porch boys that's it that's it and you know we play at matthew zay house and they love it and they applaud every song shout out to linda shout out to linda at the uh, matthew owner, Zale house bartender extraordinary how long have you been going up there to the ale house uh 
five, six, seven years, maybe that that long. It's been a long time. Wow, it's been a while. Started, That's where you start playing trivia about seven years ago. That's where you met uh, uh, Danny, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Danny playing playing in the uh, nine ball pool league. Um, I want to play some uh, Mighty Max Stalling from uh, Texas. He's he's a really good Americana music uh, guy as well, and. Uh, Goes a little something like this. I believe this is the first time we've ever performed this on the stage together, so it works out pretty good. If only the day, uh, good die young, we might live forever. Is that J45 too? Gibson? I was driving just last week. Out west where it's wide open. When out the hot cloud field, the dust devil clicked his heels, headed for the road. When we intersected, little world went to me. It sure shook me good, sitting across my hood, it reminded me of life. And I'm going to good time. I like shirt he's wearing. Yeah. Man trying to go to church. He talks about fishing. But I keep getting intercepted by the ball game on TV. Zepco 303 did Peter fish in. And I thought a good die young. I might live forever. Asking all about Trying to figure it all out Just trying to do my best I do Whoa that's a, I think that's a Nashville Telecaster Yeah With that strap pickup in the center position uh. Uh, kind of a Mexican style horn right yeah, there. Yeah, I was saying kind of mariachi. Yeah. That definitely makes it a, a lot more eclectic oh, than your average. There are things that I have done. Your average Americana band sound. And I think I've learned my lesson. Yeah, I saw him once when I was down there. I was totally blown away. I sure hate to get asked to stand up in class and explain to everyone. <laughs> oh, we love those cowboy shirts, don't we? Oh, yeah. I love those. Was he capo third fret for the key of G, it looks like? Oh, well, not there. Wow. See, and the fiddle player reminds me of our musical cohort, Olivia. Olivia, yeah. yeah. she. Uh, I saw her on Facebook, and she was kissing on some big cowboy. I haven't seen that. Yeah, if you get a chance, look on there. Uh, she's got uh, her and this big, tall guy, and they were... Uh, she's giving a little kiss on the cheek, and everybody's like, "Yeehaw! You found you a cowboy!" And <laughs> all I put was "Milk Cow Blues" because we used to play that. Right. She was a heck of a fiddle player, right. man. I'll tell you. Yeah, it was. Uh, she was definitely. Uh, yeah, we miss having her play with us. That's we for do. Sure. I'll tell you, we do. It, it. We went from a pretty good uh, bluegrass band to just outstanding. We even changed the name to Olivia in the Front Porch Boys and kind of <laughs> showcased her. She was. Uh, she was a really good uh, player, but. Uh, that right there is is talking about Americana music. And, you know, I say this a lot. Just because it's on pop radio does not mean it's good music. You know, back from about, you know, 1955 to about 78, that was the case. You know, it was good music, but uh, you know, on the pop hits, you know, give or take. And even in the 80s and the 90s. But, you know, a lot of times you have to, yeah, or earlier, you have to kind of 
sift through the stuff, you know, and find uh, the good the good stuff, you know. It's just like anything else, you know. It's uh, like the real. What am I trying to say? The real talent versus the non-talent. Well, uh, I don't want to say <laughs> I don't want to say that, but yeah, that's kind of the truth right there. Well, you know, just like a duck, swam the lake and near do- dropped the feather. Hopefully next week we'll be all together. We want to think. I think we're going to finish up and do a little blues in the key of A. And uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in and listening to us and uh, checking us out on Facebook. And please watch this program afterwards if you get a chance. And uh, I appreciate all my friends in Bakersfield, up in Boston, up down in Dallas and Fort Worth, and here in Charlotte. Uh, met a lot of good people and was influenced by every one of them. Uh, shout out to my boy Scott Fontaine down in Austin. Keep on jamming, my brother. All right. Let's do a little, uh, let's do just a couple of. Okay. Two. Charlotte, North Carolina. Have a good evening, folks.